What the heck are we creating with this time? Let me show you. So as you guys have heard 100 times, my goal in art is to make children's books. And as I shift my focus and start to work more towards that, I thought it would be really fun to create a video where I warm up my brain and kind of exercise writing or just being silly and having fun with it. So that is why I picked up these. These are writing prompt dice, but instead of numbers, they have images that prompt you to write something related to the image. They're just really silly and cute, and now I'm really excited to start creating something, writing some little short stories or some poems, and drawing an illustration with them. So with that, let's roll. Get it? Let's, let's like start, like dice, roll the, I'm sorry. But first, thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. As I pursue my dream of both writing and illustrating books, I've realized I need creative help and Skillshare is just that. Whether you want to try a creative hobby, pursue a career, or learn a new skill, this is the perfect place. Reading books is great and all for inspiration, but I found this really amazing class on Skillshare by Daniel Older. It's called Storytelling 101, Character Conflict, Context, and Craft, and I was super into it. He has a very energetic way of teaching, and I found myself writing over a page of notes on how to write better. He was mesmerizing, and I learned a lot. Skillshare is super affordable at less than $10 a month. You could not only master a new skill, but also support a passionate creator like ourselves. Sign up for a two month free trial by following the link in the description. Thanks so much to Skillshare. You guys are probably bored of hearing me talk, but really quick, I wanted to show you what supplies I'm going to be using for these stories. Like I mentioned, I have these story cubes, which are writing prompt die. And as you can see, instead of numbers, they have cute little pictures on them. I just love them. I think they're so cute. We have score, which is a sportsy sort of dice set. We have prehistoria, which is dinosaurs and stuff like that. And we have clues, which is like mystery and detective and murder stuff. So for our stories, I'm going to be combining all of these dice together and seeing what we can come up with. I am super excited to try these. I mean, they are just dice. You roll them, that's all there is to it, but I think they're gonna be fun. And to illustrate our stories, I found this really cool moleskin notebook. This is called the To Go Notebook, and it says, For Both of Me, which is a very strange subtitle, but I had to get the sap green because you guys know I love sap green. So you open up the book and it's really cool. This is what I was drawn to with this book. It's got a blank page on one side so that you can, I mean, you can do whatever you want with it, but I'm going to draw a picture on one side and the other side has ruled pages so I can write our story. So I thought that was perfect and super cool for this project. So I'm excited about that. And to illustrate and write our stories, I'm going to be using Friction pens. These are so colorful and when I saw them, I had to get them. I was actually sent this black one over a year ago by Holly Brown. She is a fellow art YouTuber. And I thought the idea of an erasable pen was really interesting and useful for this sort of project. As you can see, it looks just like a regular pen, but at the top it's got this plastic eraser that erases the pen by using friction and not so much whatever technology regular erasers use by falling apart and you know i don't know how erasers work anyways this is what we're going to be using okay what do you guys say we get to rolling some dice and creating some stories so for each story i'm going to roll each die set and see what lands into the circle we've got our red die all right we've got a trophy for our purple die it looks like we've got, ooh, a blood splatter. And for our green, the closest to the circle is a flying pterodactyl. All right, let's just jump right into it. I already have a little bit of an idea, so I'm actually super excited. We have got to start over. I swiped my hand and it smeared the ink before it was dry. Okay, let's get into it. I'm feeling, I'm feeling better. I just need to remember to have fun and don't worry about perfection. We're just here to create fun little drawings. Because we've got so many dinosaur themed um, dice, I, I have an idea right away of what I wanted to draw. 
So we have our trophy and our dinosaur, and we have a splatter that I'm pretty sure was supposed to be blood, but being me, I'm not going to make that blood. I'm going to make that another sort of splatter. <laughs> But hey, if you want to leave a guess as to what sort of splatter I'm going to draw, you can leave a comment and then I will reveal the story to you. That might be fun. You can't see it. Oh my gosh, it's so light and bright. Oh my gosh. Any guesses as to what I'm about to draw in this trophy? Here we go. If you guessed bird poop, you are correct. <laughs> now I know the flying dinosaur isn't a bird and its poop probably didn't look like bird poop, but uh, it is what it is. Maybe I should draw some clouds. I don't know how drawing clouds will make it more clear that the dinosaur is far away and not super tiny. Okay, let's stop adding detail before I regret it. Okay, we need to make up our little poem or short story about our lady. So let's brainstorm really quick. You guys, this is going to be so stupid. Okay, are you ready for our poem? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Suggesting that P stands for both pterodactyl and poo. The P in pterodactyl is silent, but the crowd for Sue was loud. The beast flew by, and in the blink of an eye, a gasp was heard from the crowd. I said I was going to write short stories. Is this technically a short story? I don't know, but it's silly and fun, so I'm excited to see what we create next. Next story. For our second story, we've got... Closest to the circle is a whistle. Closest to the circle is an exploding volcano. And... Ooh, that is... What is that? We've got a happy person and an angry person? Oh, is that like... Maybe for, what is it, kickball? When you're choosing people and one person is going to be last and you don't want to be the last person? Is that what that is? No, wait, this isn't the sports one. This is the mystery one. So this is a lineup of people who might be in trouble, like with the police. Anyway, these are our three dice for this story. So because these are prompts, I'm not going to follow these exactly to a T. I'm not going to follow that the fact that they are in a lineup. I'm just going to follow that we have two people in the story. How does that sound? Great? Good. And I was thinking maybe there were two people in an argument. And the way they settled this back in my day, this time, whatever era this is, they made people stand at the top of the volcano and the last person standing, AKA the last person that isn't dead, uh, gets to win the argument. Okay, and there are two people that are going to be standing at the volcano, but the thing is, is that they died a long time ago, so. Oh, that is quite a neck. Oh my goodness gracious. Have I ever seen a skeleton before? Maybe not. Maybe not. What if there was a dinosaur that was the referee? Because who else is going to be able to get to the top of that volcano without burning and dying? I think as I used this pen, it eventually started to flow a lot better. And the head of this dinosaur is way darker than the neck. Don't make fun of him. It's a skin condition. How dare you? Maybe adding some blue spots here and there will distract from the different color head, oh no. Okay, let's come up with a goofy story for these two. Okay, this one is really silly and there's not a whole lot of sense that's made, but that's fine. We are writing fiction. We are just being silly. What's six times two? Ned and Fred had an argument. They couldn't stop the shouting. Fred hit Ned's stone and caused a dent, so they went to the elder to solve it. The only solution was a waiting game on top of the volcano's peak. Whoever was the last one standing wouldn't be six feet deep. So the joke here is that they both died on top of the volcano because they didn't have good solutions back in the day. All right, <laughs> next story. And our next story. Closest to the circle is... Oh man, I am not a sports person. What is that, just a team versus team? It's like two people versus two people. I don't know what's happening. And for our green dice. Ooh, a fossil. 
And for purple, ooh, we've got poison. That'll be fun. So these are our three dice for this story. I mean, this could be a pizza with people's heads as pepperoni if we wanted to stretch the truth. Okay, for this one, to be honest, I don't have an idea, but I feel like drawing something. Sometimes you just have to wing it. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just gonna wing it. Okay. So I don't, I don't know what it is about little objects like bottles, but I feel like that little poisonous bottle on the dice was just so cute. And I just really want to draw some poison. Okay, we have a spilled bottle of stuff, but where to go from there? So I know that this is a fossil. It's supposed to represent not a snail, but I'm taking inspiration from the swirly shell and I'm drawing a snail. Oh no, but where does the team situation come from? Hmm, uh-oh. There's obviously some rivalry. I guess it could be rivalry not in the sense that there's teams. We could do something else. Maybe the snail is... Are snails enemies with anything? I don't even know. I seem to have backed myself into a creative corner here, but that's the most fun thing about art is that you're solving a puzzle and trying to figure out what might work. So let's just keep thinking. This room has a strict team no snails. There you go, you guys. We, we tied it in. All of the chemicals inside are very, they're very salty. So we have a picture of salt and now the snail is going to die. <laughs> oh, this is creepy. It's like a human with a snail head. They are against all snails and they created this salty uh, concoction, lured in the snail and now the snail is dying. Oh my gosh, I just realized I'm using the wrong pen. <gasps> I had this on the side of my desk and I just picked it up and started using it. And now I can erase it, uh-oh. Hope I didn't want to erase anything because I was using a non-erasable pen. Oh my gosh. So this is a simple and silly one. So let's see what sort of poemy short story we're gonna come up with. Okay, are you ready to hear the story of Doug the Slug? Everyone thought Doug was sad, his eyes were always red. The reason why he cried so much will keep you up in bed. Doug was such a hateful man, his tears were made with purpose. Collecting them into a jar, their saltiness was murderous. Hoo hoo hoo! Doug kills snails! What a butthole. Okay, next story. Okay, rolling for our fourth story. We've got a goalie. Ooh, a caveman! Ooh, a safe. Okay, that took me a minute. So we've got our... That's not a goalie, that's a referee. Wow, I am not a sports person. We've got our referee, our caveman, and a safe. All right. All right, so I'm probably going to stretch the prompt on this one just a little bit. Instead of using safe as in the picture shows like a safe with money, I'm going to use safe as in safe, as in you're out. <laughs> so I'm going to have some baseball set up over here. So because we are dealing with a lot of prehistoric dice and sports, I thought it would be silly if we have a dinosaur that is so big he is able to stretch across all of the base. And so we'll have um, a referee who maybe isn't so happy with the dinosaur cheating. Oh my gosh, this guy's arm is so long, it looks like an alien, oh my gosh. Look, I never claimed to be good at drawing things straight away with pen, and I've always been the kind of artist that just needs a little bit of sketching time to make their art look good, so this is what we get. I don't know why I drew this so close to the bottom of Wow, because where else is the rest of this illustration going to go? Let's see. You know what I need to stop doing? I need to stop drawing full background illustrations and just focusing on a silly character design and talking about the character. 
I'm going to add some color because this one just seems so sad and plain. I've never been that great at ink drawings when it comes to fast ink drawings because my style is just so simple. I feel like it leaves the doodle looking very inadequate and kind of sad. I completely forgot that one of the prompts was like a caveman with a spear, so I just put a spear being held by someone back there. Oh jeez. He's like, I'm here to kill the dinosaur if you want me to. I spelled dinosaur with a B. Binosaur. Thankfully, we are using erasable pens. Oh my goodness. Unwritten rule. Who brought the dinosaur on field? He's cheating again. What's the deal? Get him out. We'll become his meal. The cave kids argued, this is unreal. And when they were not looking, the dinosaur took the steal. Cause get it, he's he's stealing third base or, or I, I don't know, baseball. Rolling for our fifth story we've got. What is that? I think that's a person sweating. Like their face, maybe? Next for our green dice, we've got waves with a sun? Is that a dinosaur? I'm confused. Are the, is that like a desert? Maybe that's a desert. You know what? Artist interpretation. We've got files. Okay, next up we've got our waves or I'm going to call it a sandy sort of, um, what's it called? A desert. It's a desert. So that's what I'm going with. All right, this caveman is... What kind of hair do cavemen have? Let's just give him really sad, balding, spiky hair. Cute, except not. <laughs> so I really don't have a story. I'm just kind of winging this drawing and I don't, I don't know what's happening. I'm just winging it. Sometimes you just have to wing it. So we're winging it. Okay, so we've got our caveman. He's holding a shovel. Wow, that is a spiky shovel. Well, you know, shovel technology has really developed over the years. Also, his butt sticking out of his clothes because his clothes aren't big enough. What? That's crazy. It's his fellow employee, Bob. And he hates Bob. So he buried Bob in the desert for some reason. Maybe we'll find out in the poem. Who knows? Our files are also buried, but they're not naked. So our dice has a sun, and we also need to make sure we have our, our sand dunes in the background. Or waves. Who, who am I to say what this is? They could be on an island, and there's oceans in the background. Many, many oceans. <laughs> I'm giving them red cheeks and a red head because it's really hot outside and they're getting sunburned and Bob's boss is bald. So now the top of his head is getting sunburned. It's making him more angry. All right, I'm calling this one the new guy. It's kind of got a anti-joke feel to it. Let's read it. Bob messed up. His boss was furious. He expected to be fired, but now he was curious. Where were they going? He couldn't be serious. He dug his own grave. Goodbye, Bob. Poor Bob, maybe he will learn to do better. Well, I was gonna say his next job, but he's dead now. All right, let's go to our next story. All right, rolling for our sixth and final story. Oh no. So off camera, we've got someone tripping somebody. A bug. And finally, We've got a calculator. So we've got someone tripping somebody, a bug, and a calculator? No, or is it like a code, like the code to a safe? Maybe that's it, like a pin number. Maybe it's a pin number, like, like a credit card. You know what, it could be anything I want it to be. Let's see what we create. Okay, I don't even know where to begin with this one. We have a bug, someone tripping, and a pin number? What is even, what is even happening here? Okay, let's just see if we can't, let's just see if we can't. All right, start off with an ear, very large ear. Okay, we've got someone upset. I think they are going to be tripping, obviously. Okay, so their arms are going forward because they want to catch themselves. 
And you know what? This is actually the first one where we don't have to make a caveman or a dinosaur. So let's see if we can't do that. I'm changing this pin number situation to be a calculator because you can't tell me what to do. I am going to go ahead and change the pin number prompt to actually be a calculator just because, because I want to. <laughs> okay, so to tie in our dragonfly, I need to add some flowers. And uh, to be honest, the dragonfly isn't really gonna make too much of an appearance, I don't think. Okay, so the gist of this illustration is, I don't know what the heck is going on. We have a girl who's carrying a calculator, who is tripping over a vine, and there are dragonflies flying around her. What's happening? Who knows, maybe our little story can help. I simply call this one distracted. Claire loved mathematics, but she hated ticks. Numbers addition, arithmetic. Gross, a bug, get away. Distracted by her calculator. Wait, what was that flutter? How did she get here? Better look where you're... Get it? Because she loves math and she can't get her eyes away from the calculator. So she just kind of wanders around and then ends up in a forest and, and then she trips. It's a goof. <laughs> All right. So that is it for our silly, goofy warm-up illustrations and poems. I hope you guys enjoy these silly dice doodles. I think these are really good just to get the juices flowing and practice short stories and just thinking like a writer instead of just an illustrator. Sometimes you just have to make bad art and have fun with it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, if you want to get your two-month free Skillshare trial, click the link in the description. Thanks for watching and stay golden. Bye.